This is the Lincoln Journal Star editorial board interview with Senator Patty Panzen Brooks, who's running for the Democratic nomination for the first US congressional district. Uh, Senator, we are grateful to have you here today. Uh, we will briefly just introduce our other two editorial board members, um, and then we will launch into our questions. Uh, Ava, you want to go first? You bet. I'm Ava Thomas. I'm the president of the Lincoln Journal Star. Thank you. And Kent? Uh, Kent Walgamont. I write about arts and entertainment, and I have been on the editorial board for 12 years, I believe. Wow. And... Oh. Um, proof. <laughs> I've read it for a long time, Kit, so I know. And I'm Dave Bundy, the editor. Uh, so, Senator, um, our first question is sort of a good way to introduce yourself. Um, why, this is a, a, an interesting time to be involved in public service, as you well know, it's a challenging time. Um, so why do you want uh, to be in Congress and what experiences and attributes do you have that you think will qualify you and help benefit your constituents? That is a loaded question, but uh, sure is. yes, it's a good one. So I, um, you know, you, people ask me all the time, why would you want to do this? And I'm, I'm really, my only response is I've been running for things all my life. I've been running to uh, my kids to get my kids to school. I've been running uh, to help raise money for different fundraising issues across the city, including Centennial Mall and Union Plaza and uh, the LPS bond issue. I co-chaired all three of those. Um, you know, and then once I, I ran for uh, office, uh, for the legislature, I, I just, I found a niche and I felt, realized I can help people. And I, I almost look at it as a duty, uh, just like it, when people have the opportunity to vote, they should vote. And, and I have this path that opened up when we redistricted in September. And to me, I felt like I have a duty to see what I can do to get people to stop throwing grenades at one another from their corners and to move forward and, and try to try to help this country, help our democracy uh, to pull back together, to have our communities become stronger and recognize that we aren't each other's enemies, but we're our, each other's brothers and sisters and neighbors and we, we can do better. So, um, you know, I think people have said that they think public service runs in my, in my blood because my dad uh, was on the city council right after he got out of uh, World War II, having been wounded. And then uh, he was acting mayor in Lincoln for um, a little bit. And then he died when I was 14 from lung cancer. And then uh, my mom then ran for the school board because she was, she was really concerned about kids with learning disabilities and teaching teachers how to teach those kids. And she was trained and was teaching them one at a time and decided she needed to run for school board. So when that happened, um, she won the election and then ended up uh, handing me my diploma when I graduated from Southeast High School. So that's a pretty, I don't know which one of us was more proud, but um, I, so I have seen this service. My dad after World War II, of course, uh, talked a lot about service to country, about um, our, demo our democracy, um, we're, I have a lot of lawyers in the family, so the Constitution was a big thing, and we would talk about it over dinner. I have three brothers who are lawyers. I married a lawyer, um, my two uncles, I have cousins. So I only tell you that because that's what gives me the passion to care about our democracy and to say, this is not good what's happening right now. So I, I feel really a duty to serve and a duty to go after this. I, you know, I'm, I'm finishing two years or two terms in the legislature and I could just sort of sit back and, and relax and enjoy my kids, two of whom live in Lincoln, uh, one in DC, but I, I really do feel I have some more to give. So that's what, that's what I feel like I need to do. All right. Thank you. Well, you, you've touched on this already a little bit, but um, perhaps you can expand on it. Uh, what, what do you think you can do? What do you think needs to happen to close the partisan rift in, rift in Congress and to 
to make Congress more effective? Well, number one, I, and that's a common question, what, what you really mean is what in the world do you think you could possibly do to change anything in a way? Yeah, I tried to make it sound smarter yeah, you, than that. You but... were trying to be a, you know, a little softer on that, but I, I caught what you were saying. So anyway, um, I don't know. My goal is to take the nonpartisan, uh, non part of the nonpartisan treasure that we have in the middle of our state, which is, is our nonpartisan legislature. And you know, I've been able to work back and forth across the aisle. I haven't been directed by parties. I haven't been directed by any majority whip. I, I intend to make my own decisions. Now, I don't know if that's naive or not, but you know, maybe 50 of us across the country are, are getting elected to do the exact same thing, to say enough. It's time now to work together. In the legislature, something like 87% of the bills that we vote on, we, we pass unanimously. Nobody even knows that because of course, what makes news and what makes you all want to write the stories are the things that are more controversial and have issues on both sides, not the, not the myriad of things where we do agree. So um, I, I think most people don't realize that. And most people don't realize that, uh, you know, we're, we're arguing about some things about which we're very passionate, but then we have to move on. And I learned that the first time in the legislature because uh, the first year, because I was fighting really hard on an LGBTQ plus bill. And I have a gay son. My oldest son is gay who lives in DC. He's working in cybersecurity in DC, helping to protect our country. But of course, if he were here, he could be discriminated against because of the person whom he loves. So. That's just to say that I, I really do think that we have to be a kinder community and, and filled with more uh, ability to, you know, welcome each other and recognize each other. And so when I, when I brought, I, Senator Morfield brought that bill the first year and then I brought it every year after, but he uh, brought that bill and I prioritized it. And when that happened and it failed and I had, senators say to me, you know, I, I know what you're saying. I'm totally with you, but I just can't do it because my constituents will never put up with it. To me, it was the most heartrending thing that happened in that body. And I, I was very upset. I was, I was really frustrated with some friends that couldn't have the wherewithal to vote the way that they even believed was correct. And then I, I just, I, I could barely even think about going back in there. And the very next bill was about the, the immigrants and the DACA bill to get the driver's licenses for those, uh, for the deferred action immigrants, that those kids that have come here uh, and have gone to our schools and needed to be able to get driver's licenses to get to jobs and to be able to, to be a part of our community and be in, in the workforce, which is so highly necessary. So I had to, to gear up from something where I was so aggravated with people. And then all of a sudden we had different people on board and you learn to sort of forgive and move on. And I think that's really something that needs to happen in DC more is to be able to find the common ground, you know, a, a, yes, get passionate about our issues, but then move back together and uh, and work on the next issue where we can agree. Uh, you you brought up something that I just I'd like to touch on. It's uh, sort of a follow up question. It how do you and and it's I I just don't know the right answer to it. But how do you balance the when when you have an issue that you you feel very strongly there's a right and a wrong versus uh, when that may be in conflict with what your constituents feel. I mean, how do you how do you balance representation with moral obligation? That is a great question. Um, so I think I think it's one of the harder things to do. And I do feel that, you know, I, I was elected by um, 63% of the vote, which is a pretty darn good vote margin. And so I, I feel as if most of my constituents were, were with me. And I was able to talk on the campaign trail about all the different things where I, um, and my different beliefs and, and what my value system is. 
Um, I listen to the people that have different values. Um, I think it's important to understand that we're each on a different journey and we're each, no journey is, is more correct or more valuable. And I need to understand others' journeys and just as I need to explain mine. And yes, there are times where I am a mama bear about LGBTQ. I don't, I, I have a hard time being patient with people who, who want to discriminate against my son and his colleagues or friends uh, just because of the person whom they choose to love. I feel that's bitter and I feel it's twisted and I, I, it is very hard. But I also understand people are at different points in their life journey. And that doesn't make their journey any less valid. It shows that we're just at different points in, in our lives, not necessarily higher or lower, just different points. And so I try to remind myself of that. Um, it's hard sometimes, but uh, I, and I do, you know, we get all sorts of letters and emails and all that from the, from constituents. And I try to listen to it. And then in the end, we have to make a decision. And I, I try to, to die, decide what, if, if I have a conflict, I go with what my heart says about something, uh, unless it's an overwhelming position where I'm not in agreement. Fortunately, I've not had that. Uh, I've not been in that position with my constituents in the legislature. Okay, thank you. Um, so uh, what do you think are the key elements that our country needs to attend to when it comes to ag policy and international trade? Uh, two things very important in Nebraska. Yes, um, I think that there, there's no question that we have to work to, uh, you know, ag is not my, I, I am not a professional or nor am I an expert in ag. So I look to the Farmers Union and the, the Nebraska Farm Bureau for their leadership on all of that. Um, but I, I obviously care a lot about making sure that we have seamless ability to export uh, our, our uh, food products and make sure that we are able to um, work and, and uh, just keep, keep all the, the roads open uh, for, for importing and exporting our goods. So I think it's really worrisome. I know that we had trouble a few years ago, um, not uh, working with various countries, and we just have to do our best to work with as many countries as possible, including our allies, but even some of those that, with whom we haven't agreed. It's, it's important for our farmers. It's important for uh, you know our, our entire ag sector. So uh, that's m my goal is to is to listen to them, uh, understand their greatest needs. Uh, and not necessarily be uh, the one deciding their policies. I need to listen to them. And that's, that's I mean, that's one thing connected to your previous question that um, when it has to do with issues in the Judiciary Committee as a lawyer, I will, I, I understand the law better than some others on that committee. And um, so I'm able to call through the bills, call through the laws, balance them against the constitution and other laws. But when it comes to ag, uh, ag issues, I, I am setting up an ag advisory committee and I, I will be depending on advice from experts in those areas. Okay, thank you. So here's another one that you've sort of touched on briefly. You, you talked about the dreamers. Um, our, our gubernatorial candidates are spending a lot of time talking about immigration. Um, immigration is actually a federal issue. And so, you in the Congress uh, would have more of an impact on it. What, um, what shape should immigration reform take? Do you have any, any direction, any thoughts on that? Well, I, I believe that we have to prioritize border security and make sure that we are careful about how we, uh, how, how we maintain the border control. But I also believe that we have a high need, you know, the, the state chamber, the number one issue is workforce development. We need more people in our state working. So I really feel strongly that we need to have a more seamless pathway uh, to citizenship. And that includes uh, the cumbersome nature of the, uh, of what it takes to go through all the 
red tape to become a citizen. Um, but you know, these these many of the immigrants are uh, taxpayers. They are uh, incredible participants in our economy. Uh, many of the smaller communities have restaurants and stores that have be, been uh, begun by uh, immigrants. So the main thing is to try to help with the uh, pathway to citizenship that needs to be more seamless and then just make sure that our security of, at the border is strong and, and able to handle uh, the numerous uh, people who are trying to come across. All right, thank you. Well, we've got, we've got two questions left, uh, plus whatever Kent tries to sneak in. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I have to have the last question or this doesn't work right. But okay. the second to last question, which I have a feeling is a good prelude to something Kent will ask is, um, what would your priorities be on a, on a national level as they relate to Nebraska? What are the, what, you know, what are your top concerns and the issues that you're most interested in shining a light on and getting things done on? Well, I think that's an easy question for me because I, I think it's infrastructure. Uh, it's infrastructure uh, and that includes so many different things, roads, bridges, uh, renovations to airports, uh, robust broadband uh, access, um, being able to, um, you know, it's, it's connection to communities, but it's connection of people as well. And I think, you know, there was the, there was the infrastructure act that was just voted on, I think it was about a, maybe two months ago. And uh, the current, current, uh, congressman did, voted against that, and I, I totally would have voted for that. I don't understand, uh, you know, when 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 you look at Nebraska and the fact that we have I eighty going through it, uh, we need to have our roads in top shape. We have to have the ability to uh, have business thriving. And um, my husband and I have a, a law firm that we started in 1986, and we do mostly uh, business, corporate, and real estate law. My husband does a lot of telecom work as well. And so I've been able to understand the need for business, the need for small business owners to be supported. Um, that's, that's another thing is making sure small business owners are supported because we tend to focus on you know, bringing in the bigger companies, but we often forget the small businesses who are truly the backbone of our country and our state. So those are things I really care about and have worked on. You know, we've helped thousands of businesses <clears throat> and individuals in their businesses uh, since we started our law firm together. And uh, I just, it's interesting because I, I took a, a left turn when I got in the legislature because when I graduated from law school, people that it was assumed at that time that a lot of women would go into family and juvenile law. And I just thought there is no way I'm, I'm going to go do something different. I'm not going to do what's expected of me. And so uh, I went into corporate and business law and real estate. And um, at that point, uh, we had a, we've had a good practice together and it's been positive being able to help people uh, to grow their businesses. It's, it's a positive area and to also keep them out of trouble. But then I got in the legislature and all of a sudden, literally, I think the first month, somebody said to me, well, you know that kids don't have uh, a right to counsel across the state, don't you? And I was like, what? And they said, oh yeah, well, uh, in, in Omaha, they have it 100% of the time and Lincoln at 63% of the time and the rest of the state is just, uh, just a complete uh, mess. and and it is not provided. And at that point, I remembered from my law school that um, that Justice Fortas, this is probably more than you want to know, but in the case 50 years ago of In Ray Galt, uh, he famously said, the condition of being a boy does not justify a kangaroo court. And that just all of a sudden hit me and I thought, I've got to help these kids. People expected me to help them when I first got out of law school and I've been doing a lot of business law but I have got to work to help these kids. So that's really how my uh, legislative career, that's the blessing of being able to be a Senator is that it took a, a, a left turn and I was able to uh, do a lot of work on solitary, stop solitary confinement in, in Nebraska. Uh, now juveniles have counsel. 
100 percent of the time uh, in Lincoln and Omaha and Sarpy uh, as long and also the rest of the state as long as uh, it's a felony type infraction. It's not perfect. It's still better than it was. And uh, there's just been a lot of wonderful things I've been able to work on that that being in the legislature has given me the luxury to do. All right. Thank you. Um, Kent, you, you got a question here, I'll bet? Uh, a couple, actually. Uh, first off, as you know from in, being in the legislature, the real work gets done in the committees. Uh, have you given any thought to the what committees you might try to get on if you get elected? I knew he was going to ask that one. Yeah, well, that's a good one. It is. So, of course, you know, I would I would be very interested in appropriations because that's where the money is. And so that's that is uh, one that can, you know, help Nebraska. Uh, we have a better feel for um, and, and certainly some of our, our previous representatives have been on the appropriations committee and it's been very valuable. So that would be a goal. I don't know if a first year uh, congresswoman could do could be placed on that on that committee. Um, another committee, of course, is uh, ag, and I think it's very important for uh, for a Nebraskan. And again, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to depend on a lot of people to inform me of their needs. But um, I think it's really important to have a voice on ag uh, as a Nebraska as a Nebraska representative. Uh, and the the second one. Um, has to do with uh, voting rights and voter suppression and all. I assume that you would probably be in favor of the John Lewis bill and, and all of those, but what, what would, you know, would this be any kind of priority for you? It seemed like in, in your, uh, when you first did your answer to that first question, that kind of rang through there. It, it is something, of course, uh, that's part of the constitution that I truly value and, and, and celebrate and you know we have been uh in our democracy one of the countries that celebrated uh giving everyone the right to vote at an early point now of course it didn't include everybody at first because women weren't included till 1920 and then of course uh native americans and uh than women of color so it, it has been a varied and <clears throat> slow and imperfect process but uh, with that Voting Rights Act uh, in 64, I think, um, you know, we have to celebrate that and we have to protect that right. And I, I think we have to make it easier on people to vote, not harder on people to vote. And uh, creating, creating laws and resolutions that make it harder and make it harder to get out to vote and crazy things like saying you can't, have water passed out or food in a, when people are in line to vote that just makes no sense and it's not it's not number one it's not kind and number two it has nothing to do with our democracy and what my dad fought for in uh in world war ii against the nazis and uh it's i just think we have to continue to have faith in our elections we have to prove that uh that they are safe and, and good and clear. And I think, you know, the only way to fix some of this is to make sure that we have different leadership. And I hope to be that leader. All right, uh, well, I have one last question. Ava, did you have anything else? I'm gonna take that to be probably not. Oh. Okay. I do not, thank you. Oh. Okay, thanks Ava. Uh, so, Senator, the last question for you uh, is uh, very open-ended. What have we not asked you about that we you really wish we would have? Uh, an issue, uh, a question, your soapbox speech, whatever you like. Well, that is really nice. Um, I think that I think that it's just that I care about making sure that all Nebraskans are included. Where, whatever we're doing, however we're moving forward, I want Nebraskans uh, to be welcome to our state. I want Nebraskans to, uh, and, and I want others welcome to our state. I want to be a state that's welcoming and kind. I want to help us to support the ag sector. Uh, I wanna continue to fight for uh, 
underserved people and people that are in the margins. I've done a lot of work in on native issues, Indigenous Peoples Day. Uh, I uh, was part of the part of the whole process about Fight Clay and having those stores close. Um, I think that there are just so many issues where we can work together to make this state stronger, to make our country stronger. Uh, I, I really think it's important that we do a better job of working together, remember to agree to disagree on things and uh, to just realize that we can be passionate about things, but it doesn't mean we have to hate each other. We do not have to resort to standing in the corners and throwing grenades at each other. So I feel, I feel really positive about um, you know, what, I'm, what we're doing and um, what I've been able to do. I've worked on human trafficking. When I first got into the legislature, uh, we were uh, ranked F among uh, Polaris, the national group that ranked states, and we're now an A. And that's thanks to a lot of work across the aisle uh, with a number of, of different conservative senators and you know, a willingness for us to work together and, and make a difference for, for individuals who are truly uh, at risk. And um, I, I, feel, I feel very grateful to have been able to do that work as well. So um, I don't, I, I'm just, I'm ready to take this on. I'm ready to, no matter what, I want this to be a different kind of campaign. I do not want to, um, engage in all the, the negative toxic campaigning that's going on right now uh, uh, in the gubernatorial race as well as uh, in the congressional race uh, in CD1 that we are, we are seeing those ads. And this does no good for anybody. And I, I will say to you all, you'll probably see terrible pictures of me and you'll probably have terrible things that you will read about me. And what I ask you now is, is to just know that uh, I care about Nebraska. I care about uh, our people. I have three children, so I understand the needs of families and working families. Uh, and I, I just, I, I wanna be your next Congresswoman and I'll, I'll fight hard, but I'm gonna do it as kindly as I can. Thank you. All right, well, Senator, thank you very much for spending this time with us. Uh, have a great weekend. We, uh, we appreciate your, your public service and your willingness to uh, stick your neck out and run for this office. And with that, I will end the recording and thank you very much. Great questions, David. <laughs>